God, I just love watching this. Look at him mow these down. Like, bzzzt, 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 bzzzt. <laughs> Abilities are cool. And so, of course, I wanted to add them to my game too. Without them, the combat felt kind of boring and stale. Just look at this. Boing, 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 boing. I recently made a video that described the one year of progress in my game, but I didn't really go into much detail how I added all of these different features. Especially skills have been one of the biggest changes in combat. If done right, my units become basically gods. For example, I can turn my normal unit defender into a massive, unbeatable tank. Just pick up some regeneration, block chance, reflect mitigated damage, give me some armor. Oh, how about some lightning damage so I have some AoE? And then watch this guy go. He's not gonna die. Even though it's kind of overpowered, I love this. It gives me a sense of satisfaction. Basically, w what you want to achieve in tower defense game. You want to make it so that enemies are completely destroyed. The only question was, how do I do this in C++? I knew that I wanted skills. I just didn't know how to implement and draw them. First, I thought, okay, well, I need to have different skills. What is the best idea? So I created an enum where I add in, for example, the skill Meteor, skill to increase attack speed, increase damage, blah, 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 blah. Then I was like, okay, so I now have different skill types, but I want to know what every skill is called. And so I came up with the idea of a global variable array where I just match the enums with a specific name. Now, in case you're wondering about localization, I have no idea how to do that. And uh, that will be a problem for future me, not present me, okay? So pretending that problem doesn't exist, I have found the perfect solution in a global variable array for skill names. Okay, so now that we have the sexy names, Ice Wave, what is the data needed for a skill. If we look at the skill description, what we need is definitely a cooldown. So that would be the time it needs to recharge. And then in my case, a usage cost. What do I spend in order to use that skill? So I need those two things. Let's quickly take a look at my skill struct. First, I have the skill ID, which references the enum skill ID. And then down here, I have a bunch of other data, like for example, the cooldown, which is what we talked about, the usage cost. And then what else do I need? I need a time to know that, okay, I just activated my skill. This is how much cooldown I have. And this is the time that's currently counting towards the cooldown. Okay, so now I know how much a skill costs. In my game, a skill costs gold, which has its own entire problem, which I'll talk about at the end. And then we also need to know, well, how much damage does it do? What does it do? Right? Is it... Is it like a passive skill? Is it an active skill? Or what type of effects do I get when training this skill? For example, the shocking touch increases my chain count by five. And so I came up with a very long union that basically says, if I have a certain skill, what does it do? If we can go down here to Ice Wave, it says, how much damage multiplier am I applying to my attack? And what is the range of the skill? Doing it this way allows me to create a generic skill and then access the specific properties, for example, Ice Wave, and assign their values. I do this more for myself than for programming correctness or whatever you want to call that stuff. Because if I see in my code, oh, Ice Wave Damage Multi, I'm like, aha, uh -huh. I want to remember what I was talking about five months ago when I'm looking at my code and I'm going like, Huh? Okay, so now that we know how much a skill costs, what the cooldown is, how do we target units? For example, I have this shocking touch ability. If I use it, it gets applied to my unit. But how do I get a target for the ice wave? Or another example, I have this ability called wind slash. How do I use this ability? If I press Q right now, it doesn't work because this ability is a targeted ability. So I came up with the idea of right clicking on units. You can see this indicator right here. And then that allows me to attack this unit with my wind slash. Abilities like the ice wave are more or less skill shots and they don't really work with targets. Also, I think it would be cringe if you had to choose a target. And so I created this nice skill shot indicator taken from League of Legends and that allows me to fire a skill into a direction. For that I needed to add a bit more functionality to my skill and I did it in the shape of a, another enum that I called skill target type. This enum basically says do I have a point and click skill or is that a skill shot? And then in the future I also want to have a skill target type location. This could be a type used for poison puddles or any skills that target areas instead of specific units. Now that we know what type of data a skill needs, how do I actually create one? And I had two options. I could either use a JSON file or C++JSON, which I call C++ code. 
or cakes JSON. I created a function called create skill of type, and within that function, I just switch over the different types of skills and have all the data in one place. For every skill, I set what sprite they use. I created a bunch of icons for every skill. For ice scratch, it's this one. And then I access the ice crash structure and set all of the data needed. I set the cooldown, I set the usage cost, has a cost of one, which I'll get to in a second, and is own ID. This might seem a bit complicated, but it works for me. How do we train and upgrade skills? You can see at the very bottom here, we have this upgrade cost. Every couple of levels, my units get skill points. You can see this guy's level 16 and he has 15 skill points. And then if we look at this guy who is level three, he has two skill points. So for every level, you get one skill point. And then if you want to train additional skills, currently all of them cost one skill point. And this guy could train one, two skills. And then you can see at level five, it is possible for him to learn another additional ability or skill. And so we could, we could level him up to level four. He's able to upgrade his current skills, but he's not able to train a new one. For that, I created what I call a level skill count table. This is obviously subject to change. I just went with the traditional 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 20. I thought that felt like a natural progression. And so in the end, I want to be able to have eight skills. Four passive skills and four active skills. And since I have so many skills and oftentimes they don't really work together, users requested a reset button from me. This will definitely change in the future. This is just so you can play around while this game is in its demo state. I'm currently actually working on improving my skill choices because I think this ginormous skill menu is just way too overwhelming for new users. What I've seen people do is they just skip over the first two skills like, oh, train that please, bro. Why would I read this shit? Which brought me to the idea of vampire survivors and how you can train skills there and how it's like a random choice. But this is all in development right now and currently looks something like this. Totally not taken from Hades. It's all my original idea okay Hades is just a great game just saying once i had skills in the game i noticed that i had a problem i have different classes for example this guy right here is a healer and this guy right here is a mage by default he shoots fireballs what is a skill then what should be an ability and what not if a defender has its basic attack should a mage have a basic attack too that doesn't deal aoe damage by default should there be a fireball spell in the game or should that be something that he always has that's his thing and the same goes for the healer he's currently healing my unit over here but should that be an ability that only the healer can train or is that an ability that the healer has by default if you have any idea how about you tell me in the comments the next big problem i have with my current system even though it looks great and it works what is the resource used for skills as you see on the top left here I get gold for every unit that I kill but it also costs gold to use abilities and it costs gold to level up for example let's look at this mage he can level up spending 40 gold in the process now he just leveled up and I can train a new ability oh that's a cool bug huh that's another active ability pretend that doesn't exist okay doesn't exist you don't see that and so for the longest time I didn't know what to do but I have a cool idea that I want to test out in the future because I think spending gold on skills makes absolutely no sense who spends gold on using a skill. Oh, let me please use this thunder here, bruh. I need 50 gold to create these earth spikes. Okay, they cost money. Give me the money, please. The idea came from a video that's basically inspired me to do this video, which is from Game Endeavor, adding powerful combat abilities to our indie game. He has this adrenaline bar at the very top, and that fills up every time he strikes an enemy. And then when it's full, it allows him to use more abilities or special abilities. And that's when I was like, oh, fuck. Cause I could use that too. I could make it so that doing your basic thing fills up an adrenaline bar, maybe on the left here, or maybe like another globe on the right that allows you to spend resources on skills. And that is something I wanna test out next. That would also fix an internal problem that I always had, which is toggable skills. Shocking touch. I think that that ability should toggle and drain your adrenaline while it's active. Oh, I just turn this mode on. God damn it, I died. No. And so, yeah, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. If you like what I do, consider tuning into my Twitch. I stream at 10 a.m. Central Eastern Time, which is 1 a.m. Pacific Daytime. I also want to thank all my Patreons for supporting me on this journey. Silly, 
Daniel Scobo, Techbox North, Shruptor, Michael Phillips, Felix F. and Meo Meo the Writer. Thank you very much. As a thank you of mine, Patreons get access to the source code of the game and occasionally I post pixel art that can be used for free. 